Hello my soccer universe! Tournament football in the summer is upon us. Isn't that exciting? I really really think it is. Unfortunately, talking of course about the women's Euro, unfortunately for me the timing is not uh, the best one personally, uh, but we'll talk about that. I actually think that now that we had such an extended break, uh, it would have been perfect to, you know, have the women's years maybe two weeks earlier. It would slot really nicely into the calendar and all the attention would be on it. Uh, now it gets kind of a little bit, not quite yet, but almost, you know, um, the, the build up to the new, uh, season, um, that has to start early anyway is already there a little bit. So, uh, it might take away from it, uh, more than I would like to see. Now, um, I have to say, while I do not follow the women's club game all that much and mea culpa, because I think it's something that, uh, should do. I really have enjoyed the last few women's tournaments that I've, I've been watching. Uh, the women's Euro is actually a tournament that has been on my radar for a while. I think the, 2013, I think. But even before that, I already had it. The women's World Cup uh, was always something where I at least made it a point to watch the final. And even in the Olympics, I have to say one of the best games that I have seen. Now, this is not Euro related. Uh, one of the best games that I have seen um, in the past decade uh, was definitely the Olympic semifinal between the US and Canada, I think in 2012, a 4-3 win for the US in overtime. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing game. Uh, and generally, um, what is really exciting about women's football, and it's also, especially in these Euros, that the playing field is much more level now. It used to be that there are a handful of nations that are just ahead and shoulders above uh, any, anybody else. And yes, if it was a World Cup, we will still be talking about the US being the overwhelming favorites. Um, however, in Europe, the big nations, especially on the men's side, are really uh, starting to catch up, which is in a way very exciting to see because we have the traditional uh, Nordic powers uh, in there, but now even in Southern Europe, uh, women's football is growing immensely. We saw it with the great uh, crowds that Barcelona uh, could have in the Champions League already. And um, even the, um, the big club teams have, have realized it doesn't need much investment uh, to get a really good women's squad. And uh, while it started in France, and France pro 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 of those new nations is the one that is definitely um, um, the furthest along in a way, but we see now uh, recently the rise of England, and now we also see uh, nation uh, and you know the Netherlands. I think they are they are in the second tier. Netherlands, of course, are the defending champions. Um, but then we we have the Italys and especially the Spains also coming up, which makes it really really exciting. Um, this particular tournament. It is not really clear who is the favorite, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, only so much that um, the bookmaker's choice for most of the time was Spain because Barcelona were so dominant. But that Champions League final loss of Barcelona really put a dent in there and everything is leveling out. And you hear, of course, hosts England are in there. We have the defending champions in Netherlands who are also World Cup finalists. But on one side, on the other side, they just got beaten badly by England. Uh, and in a way, we have Germany who are great up front, uh, not very solid at the back. We have, of course, Sweden in there. Um, as a big nation, we have France who are, who should have won by now at least a tour to tournament. They are kind of the big disappointment. They're a little bit the Spain, you know. When I grew up, Spain was this great nation where everyone said they should win something, but they never did. And France, uh, starts is a little bit like, like that on the women's side. And then we have, of course, the Spain squad who is probably, um, the, probably the best player in, 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 in the world and also relies on a big Barcelona block. However, can they get over this humbling defeat at the hands of Lyon? And then there are the, I think there are at least two to three outsiders in there that I also, Fine. I mean, Germany, we already talked about it. Um, I have not talked about Sweden. Sweden is uh, another team that everyone has, at least in the top four choices. I think Sweden has a really, really strong, strong call, and now we can get to the outsiders. Norway, if Ada Hederberg shows up, Norway at the moment is not among the favorites, but I think Norway could 
potential do something. Italy I have, they had a remarkable rise as well. I mean, they were quarterfinals in the World Cup. Um, I don't think that Italy are uh, in any way are challenging for a title. And Italy actually have quite a long history. If you go over the uh, Women's Euros results, Italy have quite a long history in the tour. In the tour. But I think it's only now that the league is professionalized and that the big teams like uh, Juve, Milan and Roma are also moving in there, that the game is also picking up a little bit. So yeah, that's the preload. I think it's a really, really exciting tournament. And I'll tell you at the end, I will do my best to uh, watch as many games as I can, although there is a huge, huge caveat. And I will leave that for the end regarding my coverage of this tournament. But I think I want to start. Let's start at the groups. Let's analyze the draw, which I should have done earlier. But, you know, uh, now I actually had the time to sit down and uh, then we'll talk about uh, projection and who are the overall favorites and so on. So. Here are uh, the full draw you see on top, the four uh, with the blue uh, behind those were the pots. Uh, I just needed, needed to do it that the focus goes actually on the, on, on the bottom where we have the four groups. And it clearly sticks out to me that group B looks like by far the toughest group of them all uh, with Germany and Spain, the matchup of the first round. But Denmark, who are a finalist from 2017, a team not to be underestimated. Another big clash are Netherlands and Sweden, of course, and this is an opening match, so that's one to look forward to. Whereas on the other side, it seems like, at least at the beginning, that England got a little bit uh, uh, off lightly. I mean, Norway's in there, um, which could spring a surprise. Austria, semi-finalists from last la, la, summer, I, Austria, of course, my home country, I do not expect them to repeat that, although for me that Austria is there and actually have the honor to open the Euros is already a huge, huge, huge uh, boost. And, you know, um, if it wasn't for Anna Hederberg being, being there, I think Austrians would even think, yeah, maybe we can get a second spot in that group. But at the moment, it seems like very much said that Austria will finish in third place. But hey, who never, never knows. The last game is against Norway and maybe there is a chance there. Gru uh, as I said already, group, the group C, the Netherlands and, and Sweden, I think are the clear favorites in that group. And group uh, D, France and Italy, it is kind of, um, should be France and Italy. I don't know about what Iceland and Belgium can do. Uh, also, we had Portugal replacing Russia. Uh, initially, Russia would have been in Group C uh, together with um, Switzerland. However, for obvious reasons, they have been banned very, very late though. So Portugal just a month and a half ago or so was announced to uh, replace Russia. Uh, so much so that in the Panini sticker album, you cannot even find Portugal. You need to order that page directly from Panini. For, fortunately, although sadly, also, I, I, I don't do the sticker albums again. So let's uh, compare these groups quantitatively. And while I did is I went through the official FIFA ranking, uh, took the ratings there and I took the bookmakers odds, uh, an average uh, of all the bookmakers odds from um, odds portal. And I uh, converted those into a uh, combined rating, giving 50% to the FIFA rating and 50% to the bookmakers. And then averages out to kind of get a little bit of feel how strong these teams are. And based on these ratings, which are all then uh, normalized between minus three and three, we see already, if you see here, um, we have left is group A, B, C, D, and then uh, in black, we have the teams from pot one in uh, red, pot two, green, pot three, blue, pot four. And we see, of course, that the strongest team, thanks to home field advantage, is England. Um, but we also see that groups B and C are on top rather, rather close together, but with the pot two teams actually slight favorites, uh, whereas France is a clear favorite over Italy, of course, in their group. We also see that uh, group B, I mean, if you see the slight uh, gray dot there, um, this is the average every group B is the strongest, that's the strongest group with only Finland uh, pulling it uh, down. Uh, whereas Group C, yes, might be the bottom two are a little bit stronger um, overall, maybe. Um, but you know, Group B is kind of the group of death. Group A, England got away a little bit lightly, whereas Group D is very strong towards the bottom, but uh, with France having a clear fav fav favorite. Now, this is kind of the first optics. The second one would be, of course, to look uh, what's the impact of the draw 
pre-draw and post-draw uh, on um, on the um, chances of a team improving. And I did this in two ways. I first look uh, how did were the chances of advancing to the knockout stage affected by this draw. And if you have a positive percentage change, you're of course a winner. If you have a negative one, you're a loser. And we can clearly see and you know, the bars rise, of course, for, uh, the lower seeded teams a little bit more because, um, you know, if you go from one to two percent, that's a huge rise. Whereas if you go from, let's say, uh, 58 to 70 percent, this is in a percentage change, not such a big rise. So just have that, 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 that in mind is a little bit inflated in that sense. However, we clearly can see that. Uh, all teams in group A are rather happy with their draw. Whereas, of course, in group B, no, you're not. And uh, Finland uh, particularly got hammered. Sweden, uh, you can see is a slight winner, whereas Italy probably has it a little bit uh, harder than expected because the um, Belgium and Iceland are stronger teams uh, back there. Iceland also one of the winners because they potentially have half a shot with Italy being uh, kind of the uh, weakest team out of the um, second pot. Now, this is what qualifying for the quarter quarterfinal. It's so nice to have a 16 tournament, uh, a 16 team tournament. Let's look at it for winning the tournament. And for me, I had to laugh. Austria actually had the biggest, uh, improvement there. I can kind of see it, but on the other side, you know, uh, Austria's chances were not all that high to begin with. And now they're sitting around 1%. So, you know, you're going from a half percent to 1%. Yeah. yeah something like that. It's not that, that impressive, but the chances on a relative scale have improved the most, whereas uh, France, Italy and Belgium, and this is really now where you can also see the impact of the bracket that we'll look at a little bit uh, later is uh, mostly felt. So we see that England and Germany actually are among the winners, whereas the Netherlands and France are losers. The same goes for Sweden, Spain also. So I think that Germany, the Germany, Spain, Denmark group matches kind of well with the group A, which would be for the quarterfinals. And only then later you anyway are going to uh, meet a heavyweight most likely. So yeah, we have looked at the draws. Let's uh, see how uh, the model with these ratings and here you actually see it on the right, how the ratings uh, are in actual numbers, uh, how the groups are uh, expected to go. Group A, thanks to home, home, home advantage um, and even without home full advantage, England would be favorites, but not as dom dominant. England should win this group ahead of Norway, Austria, Northern Ireland out. You see already uh, the chance of qualifying for the core qualifiers. England looking rather good uh, with Norway also closer to England than they are to Austria. So it's a, pretty much a two horse race there. Uh, in group B, yes, it's a tight group, and especially Spain and Germany are so close, close together. It's Spain just a smidgen above Germany. Denmark outside chance. And Denmark, I, I remember the last, last one, they were actually a pretty uh, exciting team to watch. Um, but you know, gotta see. Group C also. Sweden, um, also a smidgen above the Netherlands. And, and we also see they have also a little bit more expected points than Spain and Germany have because Switzerland and Port Portugal are weaker opponents uh, on average. So that uh, would make sense. So it's those two uh, going through. I mean, uh, Switzerland only 11%, Portugal only 5%. So uh, rather, rather ob ob obvious there. And then Group D, this should be dominated by France. Um, and Italy should come out on sec second place, but you see already Iceland and Belgium. Uh, this could be a three way race. This might actually be the most exciting group there. Now, if we take exactly these, um, uh, uh the, if, if, if the groups finish as I project here, then we would get the following bracket. And I think it's very, very interesting. This one, um, where we get Sweden, you win a, Toughish Group C, you play against Italy, which is probably not the worst opponent to play against. Whereas England, if they win, play against Germany or Spain, a really, really tough opponent. So uh, while the group stage draw was really good for England, going then against Germany and Spain is always, always a tough choice. I think England would probably prefer Germany because they have recent success against Germany and Germany seems to be a little bit weak on the defense as well. France, Netherlands, another pretty big matchup. And again, uh, France, should win their group, but then have a tough opponent in the next round. So it's very balanced, this draw, whereas uh, Spain would then play against Norway. And yeah, um, 
we said Norway for, for me is a little a little bit of a wild wild card. The, the last few tournaments were not good for Norway at all. Uh, however, Anna Hedeberg was missing. Missing. So uh, we gotta see. We really gotta 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 see. But it's it's actually quite uh, exciting. And then moving forward, if again the favorites move on, and this is why I'm saying um, this is the projected bracket. So we always have the favorites winning. We would have a Sweden England um, semi final at um, in Sheffield, uh, she uh, ground of Sheffield United, Bramall Lane, and in Milton Keynes we would have uh, France against Spain. And at this moment, France, and that's mostly due to 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 the ratings. I mean, as I said, Spain is probably a little bit overhyped. Because I think they're not quite there yet, and it's also in the FIFA ring. Spain is not as high as in the bookies, but still, you would expect them to go at least semi-finals, and then they play France, and we know how France are da 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 da. And I think in Wembley, which is already sold out, England against France. That sounds like a tasty final in many ways. I think those are you know after um, Sweden and Germany and Norway those are for me the old powers and for me England and France are kind of this next gen generation so seeing this final would be a really uh, fun affair and one of those got to get the monkey off of the back because none of those have won anything before. I mean this is a tournament that has been dominated by Germany for uh, more or less two decades until the Netherlands broke that curse and before that it was Norway I think Sweden won in the 80s once. So, you know, um, it's exciting times in women's football. That's for sure. As for overall favorites, according to these, and this is, might be a little bit surprising, you have England, Spain, Sweden. No France in there, although they are projected to go to, to go a final. And it is because of that path that France will have to play a tough opponent. They are easier eliminated there. Uh, Spain just on the, uh, also sim, uh, is, is, is kind of the opposite. They have a, if they win this tough group, they have then an easier path into the semi final, which then makes them easier to win. So I, I, I think this is brilliant in, in a way that the tournament is set, set up. So we clearly can see that there's a top six England, Spain, Sweden, France, Germany, Netherlands, probably in that order. Uh, with Norway about to join that group. And then the rest is, I don't want to say cannon fodder, but are clear outsiders there. So, uh, it's not, I mean, Austria last time made it to a semi final and were not expected to go anywhere. They were actually, uh, as far as I remember, expected to finish last in their group on their first showing. So everything is possible with the right tactics and so on. But, uh, it's pretty exciting to see an open tournament like that. Now, uh, I also want to go through the schedule because my problem is, and I hint hinted about this before, that I probably be able to watch the first week of the tournament and then going on a two week vacation where I'm not sure how much A, I will see from the tournament, but B, I will not have the proper equipment or whatever to record videos. I don't want to do it from the hotel room. So sadly enough, or maybe it's all, or, or a little, a little bit of vacation mode for me. You will not get daily updates from me on this tournament. Uh, probably the, the, you will get an update, uh, prior to the final because that one I, I'll come back on the day of the second semi final. Uh, so you might see that and then I will, uh, look at the final, but I think everything else, uh, is not really, really it's a little bit of treatment that I gave the Copa America last year around. It hurts me a little bit because, as I said, I am actually quite, quite excited, but I had to make peace with that fact when we chose to go on vacation um, uh, mid-July. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it slipped a little bit in my mind. However, having said all that, we already see we have the opening game at Old Trafford. And yeah, the stadium choice has been a little bit... Um, a point of concurrent connection because the range is really really big we had like uh, we're playing match in old trafford the opening game we played the closing game of course the final in wembley but uh, then we have kind of as is typical for women's series a smaller venue or so ridiculous small venue like the manchester city academy stays in him or the one in lee so uh that's maybe a little bit of a downside However, uh, among the first set, I mean, I think the opening game is one def the death to watch. Germany, Denmark, um, Friday, I think is a very interesting matchup. The big one, Netherlands, Sweden on Saturday evening. That's a uh, very, very, uh, that's definitely worth your while. I think France, it Italy, just for rivalry sakes, although France, you know, you want to see how, how, how France is doing. This would be Sunday evening. 
Then on Monday, I think England, Norway, that could tell us a whole lot about Norway and England at the same same time and uh, the day later, Ger uh, Germany, Spain, and then I'm going on vacation. <laughs> but you know, I saw Pro 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 with the most hyped game in uh, at the Brentford Community Stadium to boot. So this uh, kind of settles the second week. I think the rest is rather straight, f should be straightforward dish games, although Italy, Iceland, who knows? And I don't know what Bel Belgium is doing. Um, then, uh, last round, potentially Austria Norway could be for a round in the, uh, for a spot in the round of 16. We have Denmark Spain, uh, looks out and then I don't know. I think the rest, we have to see how the groups do develop. Um, and just for completeness sakes, here's the schedule for, um, uh, the last uh, for for the knockout stage, uh, so it will be twentieth of, Ju of, of July that the quarterfinal start, and then it goes right until the thirty first of July uh, when the final will be played. So they stretched out the tournament quite some with uh, ample of uh, space of recovery in between. The one thing though I will do for this tournament is that you will get in the first two or two weeks I will do jersey reviews. I really want to do that uh, because I think um, women's jerseys are very interesting and this time, time, time around there are two very distinct flavors. We have one brand releasing rather boring standard jerseys and other brands actually going all out for their women. So will be interesting for sure. In any case, let me know who you think or who is your fa fa favorite team at these Women's Euros. Uh, who do you think will win? Uh, do you agree with me? It's a wide open tour to tour tournament. Do you follow women's uh, football at all? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.